Hey guys, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed parts one and two of the Bruder kind of Delta Track uh, skid steer. Um, this will be the last part. It's kind of pretty quick and wrap it all up and then we'll do some playing with it. Um, I did some playing with the servos. I'd mentioned in the last video that the micro servo was only only rated for, it's rated for 4.8 4 volts. Uh, like I said, this is a 2S uh, LiPo at 7.4 volts. The receiver takes 6 volts and actually I've been doing some playing. I'm having pretty good luck with just running it. So um, that's what I'm going to do. I made a power harness so that I got a receptacle for the battery. I got a power switch mounted on the side as well as then that uh, is soldered in there and that runs back out to the receiver. The receiver and all the all the extra wires I was kind of loop up down under here and the receiver I, receiver I was able to slide in right behind these servos and so it kind of fits down there nicely. I put a couple zip ties holding the wires uh, out of the way of the lift servo, servo arm and um, I, t I didn't end up doing anything with um, this. Let me pop that back out. I didn't end up doing anything with this uh, upper mount for the servo. Once I got everything packed in there, this kind of this bracket up here uh, does a good job holding that in place. So as long as you don't push it super hard to its limits, uh, you don't really see any flexing at all. So I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, I will say this build has been about. Uh, measure once cut twice i wish i'd measure twice cut once uh, a good example is right here on this lid i cut about a quarter inch off i didn't need to so actually if i had cut that in just an eighth inch there and a quarter inch less there then that hole would be very minimal um, the way the wire link work out this connector is just really best right here so until i think of something else better to hide that wire i'm just going to leave it there right now for now uh, went ahead and installed a switch again measure twice cut once I got my hole about a 3 16 off and so the hole is a little bigger than what it needs to be but it does work so I got a power switch there um, and like I mentioned I swapped out to these higher torque a little bit faster servos so I'm pretty happy with the speed there uh, and these sprockets work really well and I don't know if you notice it I was doing some playing uh, you can buy a kit from Bruder for about $12 with a set of forks in the back, but I was too impatient and so I just went and designed one up in SketchUp and 3D printed it out. So I actually will post the link for all of the all of the STL files for this. Uh, will be in the description of part one video, so check that, check part one out and I'll make a link right here to get you back to part one, but that's easy enough to find. Um, and while I was at it, I also kind of wanted a better bucket as well. So I made another bucket with teeth on it, just to give it a little more aggressive look. I don't know if you guys can see that. I'm still cutting some of the support material out, but um, same type of quick attach hook for the for the bucket. Kind of comparing the old bucket to this one, I made it just a little bit wider, as well as put some teeth on it, and I think it turned out great. Um, so the STL files are uh, for the bucket for the forks. Are in there as well so if you want a bucket and some other attachments and don't want to pay the 12 15 bucks and you can print it yourself uh, you can do that uh, these forks are adjustable in and out and the forks go on just like a normal forklift so now it's time to put this thing back together and we'll do some playing with it so what's nice is all of the electronics are in the top half so once you separate it you can get to all that um, I did get the LED lights installed in the cab. Just put two uh, white lights in there, kind of use the hot glue to do some wire management. Made a hole in the back there and put a little connector on there. And so I have a port coming out here for the front as well. So let me plug that in before, and I'll put, the, actually, you know what? I'm gonna put the bottom, bottom half together before I put that on. So I will get that lined up. And oh, I will mention, you know, we put the two screws in here to hold that servo. Um, I did notice on this back kind of fender, I had to trim this out a little bit because that was obstructing one of the screws and it wasn't allowing that housing to snap in all the way. 
So trim that out just a little bit um, and we're good there. So now let me put this together. Okay, I was wondering about that. I need to trim this out just a little bit here for that switch. That switch is gonna interfere right there. If I push that up, it's gonna break that switch off. I was fearing that was gonna be right there, uh, but I really wanted to put that switch right there on that ledge, uh, just like you see that ledge on that opposite side. So let me trim that down. As I push this together, I just want to make sure all my everything's clear and these little cylinder things gotta get pushed down inside it. And now that looks good. I'm just making sure I'm not catching on anything. And so it looks like I got wire in a place. Push that out of the way. There we go. So I just gotta watch my wires on the back side so they don't get pinched as I'm pushing that together. It feels a little tight and it hadn't in the past, so I'm just gonna. There we go. So I'm hearing all the snaps back there. And I will go ahead and use my little screwdriver to make sure these are all seated in. And we can snap the front together. That one's in, that one's in, that one's in. Okay, so that's all together. Now let me grab the battery. And this is not the one I'm gonna use. This is just a little 400 milliamp hour battery. Uh, my 800 milliamp hour, I left it on the other night and ruined it, so. My local guy at the hobby shop has a really nice charger that he can try to revive that lipo. So he's done that for me on multiple occasions. So like I mentioned in the video description, support your local hobby shops. They're there to help you. So I got that battery down there and I could fit a much larger battery in there. So I'm gonna go back for that 800 milliamp hour one to get twice the battery life. But I'll push this wire down out of the way and now we will hook up our wires for our cab lights. So I'm gonna just kind of hold this with my uh, tweezers and I'll plug that in. So now that's plugged in, we can see our, our lights on. So we'll turn the power switch off while we're hooking this back in. And I cut most of the tabs on that so that's really just kind of sitting there. It's going to pop off pretty easily, which is kind of the what the goal I'm looking for. I'm going to go and turn this on and turn my receiver on. There it is. There we go. I wanted to lower that, get that out of the way. So now let me put the tracks in. And so will. The tracks are a snug fit. I usually take a screwdriver just to pop the, uh, pop them over the sprocket. There we go. There's one track on, and now let's get the other side. Yeah. Oh, 
cap fell off. There we go. All right. So there's the tracks back on. Let me put this cab back in. And now I got to get a screwdriver to turn the power switch on. But power switch is on. And action. So, I am pretty happy with the way this has turned out. We're gonna do a little bit of playing, and uh, and we'll call this a day. So look, I'm gonna get set this set up, and we'll go move some stuff around with the bucket and with the uh, forks. All right, so we'll put this skid steer to the test as a uh, loader with the fork attachments on it. So we gotta pick up this Cummins 5.9 engine and load it onto the truck. You can see with the channel mix, it's able to keep that load level. Oop, my, that would get a little higher. Yeah, let's go pick up some tires off the rack as well. And there we go. I'm really happy with the way this has turned out. Uh, hopefully you guys find these 3D printed parts will make the uh, conversion of your Delta Track a lot easier as well. So, have a good day.